Well, how's it going? My name is Marty Zoffinger. I'm out here switching modes today. For the past bunch of years, I go out and I use artificials only, top water plugs, mirror deans, stuff like that, and mostly soft plastics with a paddle tail. It's really been doing the trick for me. Well, like I said, I'm switching it up today and I'm using live bait. I've got two rods working right now. I have a crab. Mm -hmm. And some stinky shrimp. I actually came out here yesterday with live shrimp and caught nothing. And uh, one of the things that's uh, a different mode is not only having live bait with me, but having four rods. I got my two rods back here. This boat comes with rod holders, the not the extension. This is a piece of PVC that I add always to my flush mount rod holders. This is the Exo Crate. Pelican sells this to go around a smaller mill crate and it's a great place for keeping all my stuff. Uh, I have two more pieces of PVC back here and the rod holders that come with the crate. And this thing goes with me in every boat that I am in lately, whether it's this kayak, a different kayak, or a boat, or wherever I am, it's always in my truck, ready to fish. So, what I'm curious about is whether or not fishing is as good as I remember it. Back in the day, I'd take my little red kayak out and I'd drown shrimp all the time. And it didn't matter if they were alive or dead. Sometimes dead shrimp work better. My friends at Tampa Bay Fishing Channel also believe this and have a funny uh, nickname for dead shrimp. Stinky pinkies. Here you can see me using a dead shrimp being suspended under a bobber. And if you put a dead shrimp in the right place at the right time, man, the results are awesome. <laughs> How's that? That was quick. Redfish are definitely one of my favorite to catch. They're real hard fighters, especially from a kayak. It's a lot of fun. And they're also really beautiful fish. Their copper sides is no doubt why they're referred to as redfish. But they also have a wonderful blue color in their fins. Look at that tail, huh? This guy wasn't big enough to bring home for dinner. And one of the ways that I make sure that the least fish have a chance to survive is to have these types of tools with me. Fish grips, long nose pliers, and a regular set of pliers. Definitely good stuff to have. Wind is up a little bit. This is a protected bay, but it's still got a chop on it. A couple days ago when I was out using artificials, it was glassy calm and I was able to see every little ripple. And there was all kinds of life out here. Shark, sharks, multiple sharks. I got followed by a manatee. I saw all kinds of critters out here. Big redfish, lots of sheep's head, big sheep's head too. And I thought to myself, man, I really want to go back because I got a few bites. I think I got a snook and two redfish using artificials. And I kept thinking, man, if only I had live bait. So I came out yesterday on the heels of seeing all that commotion and nothing. And then I came back again this morning because I saw the winds were down, but they're not down like they were two days ago. So same spot, much different results, different mode of uh, trying to catch fish and a different kayak than I'm used to being on. This is the catch mode. The mode today is just a skeg. You could also, of course, put a motor on this boat by putting a transom on the back and then you can motor along. I've done that before in the past. It is neat to have all those options to be able to switch modes. As far as the uh, live bait mode, I'm just not feeling it. So I guess I got a question from my friends that live in Tampa. Fishing just hasn't been that great for the past couple of years. My friends and other captains here seem to corroborate that. I mean, it's nice to have a comfortable seat and a wonderful kayak to be on, but when even live shrimp is not catching you any fish, I feel like there's something wrong. Not with the boat, but with the area. I do have some serious concerns about the condition of the fisheries here in Tampa Bay. If you have a comment on it, let me know if you agree. I do remember something from the old days though, which is occasionally I would go out and get skunked. It never feels good, whether it was back then or it's now. All right, fish. 
but I also remember that when the fish weren't eating the real stuff, sometimes you could use artificial and elicit a bite that way. So that's exactly what I did. I trolled around that soft plastic with the paddle tail. And sure enough, there was an angry trout out there that didn't like the looks of it. <laughs> I wasn't really quite sure if I wanted to bring a fish home to eat. That's a beauty. This guy seems to have swallowed the hook, which kind of made the decision for me. Oh dear, dear, dear. There is the hook. That's a, that's a keeper size, you think? Yes, indeed. Yep. What do they got to be, 15? These nasty, stinky, horrible, gross, ineffective, waste of monies. At least they won't stink up the place now. One thing that's exactly the way that I remember it, as far as live bait's concerned, whether you're throwing a cast net or you're buying shrimp or gathering crabs, it's a big pain in the butt. It takes money and effort, and it's no guarantee that you're gonna catch fish. So the mode of live bait this time was a big fail. Maybe the best mode is artificial. After all, tonight's dinner is brought to you by artificials. All right, now we got a fish to cook for dinner. Let's fillet it up and get to it. Now usually I would have the flay done near the water so that I can throw the carcass back in and not have to deal with it, but I wanted to bring the fish back in one piece. You can see it's a little bit dry, that's because I had it in the fridge for a second while I was outside cleaning my kayak. I just fillet them up in a traditional way. I've gotten pretty good at it over the years and I get most of the meat, even on these uh, smaller trout. I think the smaller fish taste better actually. Take the fillets out and get rid of the body. Remove the skin and the little bits that are near the fins. You wind up with a really nice fillet. Trout are pretty good eating. I like redfish better, but fate made it so that today I was having trout. So I wash it off and then I cut the fillets into little chunks. This gives more surface area for the breading. Which I use Italian style breadcrumbs. And to make the breadcrumbs stick, I use an egg. In the past I've thinned the egg out with a little bit of milk, but nowadays I just pour a little beer in there. Works great. With that done, I get my pan out it's not a cast iron skillet, but it does the job. Canola oil I use usually. And I also have gotten into the habit of using a little lemon pepper, either sprinkling it into the breadcrumbs or putting it directly on top of the fish while it's cooking. This has been my go-to way to cook fish for quite some time now. This one fish will make enough bite-sized chunks for two people, but I could eat it myself most of the time. Always, always, there's some breadcrumbs left over and a little egg left over, so I always will take some of the breadcrumbs and put them into the egg, mix it up, and voila, four man's hush puppies. I never throw away these breadcrumbs or the little bit of egg. Now, and normally I'll make these a little bit thinner than you see me making them here, but there was not too much room in the pan left, so, well, they'll cook all the way through and they'll be quite delicious. I'm pretty sure of it. With that done, paper plates get thrown away, 
I had a campfire, I put him in the campfire, and that's because washing dishes in the camper uses precious water. And already it's starting to smell good. Mm -mm. Now's a good time to add that lemon pepper. Here you can see, of course, I'm adding the spices after the fact instead of adding them to the breadcrumbs before. Normally, I would like to do some parts of this outside, like flaying the fish, but I want to do a catch and cook from inside my galley. It's a travel trailer, so it's not a kitchen, right? And forgive the sound, but I gotta put the vent on to get some of the uh, fish smell out. Although I like fish smell. And I gotta clean that screen. Good God, man. I must say ventilation on the boat when I used to cook like this was a lot better. And somehow it would taste better too. But cooking it like this in the trailer, I'm sure it's gonna taste fine too. Extra crunchy. Just the way we likes it. <laughs> Pretty much all the steps have been done, except draining the oil. Taking them out one at a time, putting them on a paper towel seems to do the trick just nice. I also cook them until they're nice golden brown. Might be a little bit longer than they're supposed to be cooked, but I've always done it this way. I've also always had a lemon on hand. Well, usually. And as one of my uh, oldest subscribers used to say all the time, I use excessive lemons. Mm. But that's okay. How else is a guy supposed to stave off scurvy? <laughs> Well, the fish is white all the way through, which means it's ready. Time to set it on the paper towels. Let it cool off a little bit. Next thing you know, this meal will be ready to eat. Ooh. Lastly, I was just gonna take it over and put a little bit more lemon on. I guess I am uh, excessive with the lemons. <laughs> but it sure does make it taste good. Using a lot of lemon is something I've been doing for a long time. But recently I've been adding one last little ingredient, which was an accident at first, but has become uh, something I do quite often. Oh uh, yeah. Thanks for coming along again on one of my adventures. As you can tell, my mode of fishing might change a little bit now and again, but my mode for cooking fish really doesn't. I mean, the barbecue sauce is a little new, but fried fish with lemon, uh, and you know the best way to do it, why do it any other way? <laughs> Catch you guys later. Let's see if I can edit and eat at the same time. Ooh, look, YouTube. I know better. I'm about to go down a vortex. Where are you taking me now, YouTube?